Good morning, I'm Rachel Rangi Heiter, Queensland's Information Commissioner. And on behalf of the Office of the Information Commissioner and our event host partner, Queensland Public Service Commission, I'd like to welcome you all to the 2018 Solomon Lecture. Firstly, I would like to respectfully acknowledge the Turrbal and Jagera peoples, traditional owners of the land on which this event is taking place, and elders both past and present. I also recognise those whose ongoing effort to protect and promote Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander cultures will leave a lasting legacy for future elders and leaders. Firstly, I'd like to take this opportunity to acknowledge Dr David Solomon, who is with us here today and in whose honour we hold our annual lecture. Since 2009, the Solomon Lecture has been an integral part of Right to Information Day celebrations designed to challenge current thinking and encourage more open, transparent and accountable government. I also extend a warm welcome and acknowledge Professor Ken Smith, Dean and Chief Executive of the Australian and New Zealand School of Government, who will present the Solomon Lecture today on trust, transparency and right to information, accountability in an age of democratic disquiet. Earlier this year, ANZOG published Opening Government, Transparency and Engagement in the Information Age. We have also published a series of papers with ANZOG on transparency previously. As you may be aware, Professor Smith has written on topics relating to trust and transparency recently, and we are privileged that he has agreed to bring the benefit of his expertise, experience and insight to discuss this topic with a focus on right to information. He is, of course, his is, of course, a unique perspective, having been the Director General of the Queensland Premier and Cabinet, responsible for the Freedom of Information Review and implementation of the right to information reforms. I also acknowledge our distinguished guests joining us today, including Vice Chancellor Ian O'Connor, representatives of integrity bodies, including Chair of the Crime and Corruption Commission, Alan McSporran, Queensland Ombudsman, Phil Clark, Electoral Commissioner, Pat Vigen, Crime and Corruption Commission Chief Executive Officer, Jenna Farrell, Acting Commission Chief Executive, Public Service Commission, Sonia Cooper, and my colleague, Right to Information Commissioner, Louisa Lynch. It is also pleasing to see many agency leaders engaging with this event today across different sectors, including statutory bodies, local government, departments, government-owned corporations and other public authorities. Thank you. Of course, we also have many more people joining us through our live stream of this lecture. Welcome to you all across Queensland, Australia, New Zealand and further afield. Please also join the conversation on Twitter using the hashtag RTID2018. International Right to Know Day is this Friday, 28th September. Our colleagues across Australia and New Zealand are holding events throughout this week, some of which will also be live streamed. In Queensland, we celebrate Right to Information Day in line with our legislation. This year, many Queensland government agencies have demonstrated their commitment to Right to Information Day by becoming partners and taking the opportunity to promote awareness within their agencies and the community about information rights and responsibilities. Our 2018 theme of trust and transparency is pertinent to developments over the past 12 months. As recently as last month, Australia, uh, Transparency International Australia and Griffith University reported declining levels of trust and confidence at national, state and local levels of government in Australia. There has been a focus in Queensland on integrity, particularly in the local government sector. The Queensland Crime and Corruption Commission recently made a number of findings and recommendations, including in relation to right to information and information management, following an investigation relating to Ipswich City Council that have broader implications across the sector. Public trust and political leaders and the government are at historic lows. Low trust creates an environment in which it is more challenging for government to be effective to succeed. The community are less likely to give their consent or support for important policies or initiatives, including the use of more efficient technology for service delivery. 
Building trust through transparency is important for all Queensland government agencies, including local government, public universities and hospital and health services. Strong right to information practices help embed the legislative principles of proactive and administrative release, meet community expectations and ensure a more responsive, accountable and open government. Right to information is critical to the integrity framework and should be valued for the opportunities it can bring to restore trust in government. It is also useful to consider a broader perspective beyond Queensland. Australia is a member of the Open Government Partnership that brings together government reformers and civil society leaders to create action plans that make governments more inclusive, responsive and accountable. Since 2011, 79 OGP participating countries and 20 sub-national governments sorry, have made over 3,000 commitments to make their governments more open and accountable. The Australian Government formally endorsed our second National Action Plan last Friday. Open Government Partnership member countries considered the issue of trust and transparency in the 2017 report, Trust, the Fight to Win It Back. The report recognises the complexity of the issue and that platforms like OGP can contribute to reverse distrust in governments and build momentum. In the report, the CEO of, Open of the Open Government Partnership, Sanjay Prahan, states that arming citizens with meaningful information is one of the six pillars of growing open government move of, uh, of a op growing open government movement. Sorry, that is redefining civic engagement beyond the ballot box by empowering citizens in policy making and service delivery, and putting them at the heart of government. He states that transparency is a critical first step in rebuilding trust. He notes, however, that information made transparent must be genuinely useful to and usable by citizens. One contributor to the report, Gail Smith, the Chief Executive Officer of One Campaign, concludes, nothing builds confidence like transparency in open government. Citizens cannot trust what they cannot see. <coughs> Transparency enables citizens to hold their governments accountable. It also fosters the civic engagement that can lead to the outcomes that both citizens and reasonable governments seek. <coughs> Earlier this year, during consultation in Brisbane on the second OGP National Action Plan, key ideas from participant discussions in relation to trust included building trust by first entrusting the community providing them with greater information about public agencies. Clearly there is a central place for information in building trust in government. Late last year, the report on the review of the Right to Information Act and the Information Privacy Act was tabled in Parliament. It is a testament to the foresight and strength of the right to information reforms proposed by the Independent Freedom of Information Review Panel chaired by Dr Solomon that the review report found that few substantive changes should be made to the Right to Information Act some eight years later. Further, the review found that the Right to Information Act contains sufficient exemptions and exclusions and the flexible public interest balancing test allows for adequate protection of information where required. Our Right to Information regime was one of the most progressive in Australia in 2009. It remains a very strong and robust framework that can protect sensitive information where it would be contrary to the public interest to disclose it. This is the key principle of the, right of the Act. All information held by the government should be publicly available unless it would be contrary to the public interest to disclose it. It is at the heart of every consideration an agency makes about information access whether a proactive or administrative release or through the last resort of formal access applications. The challenge remains to embed the pro broader principles of right to information, such as proactive and administrative release, effectively into practice and ensure implementation of RTI obligations does not sit just with those responsible for formal access applications. Our audit work consistently shows the need for agencies to focus on solid governance and ensure strong leadership and culture 
to support effective RTI throughout the agency for open, accountable and transparent government. All staff should be aware of their obligations for proactive release and what it means for them and their role, including what information they can refer people to and how they can assist decision makers when required. Later this year, my office will conduct the fourth self-assessed electronic audit of right to information and information privacy across all agency sectors to report to Parliament early next year on agency maturity and compliance. In the last report in 2016, most agencies had mature application handling practices with the areas of governance, administrative access schemes, community consultation and performance monitoring, the four key areas marked for improvement. When we next report on the state of the sector, Queensland will be approaching the 10th anniversary of the Right to Information Act on 1st of July 2019. We expect at this time, for almost all agencies, a high level of maturity and commitment to the principles of right to information. Next year will present a milestone for reflection and taking stock, where each agency will have their results from this health check to inform where they need to focus on areas for improvement and how they may move forward to meet future opportunities and challenges for information access, transparency, accountability, engagement and openness. <coughs> 